Thank you, Victor. It's a great honor to have you here uh, to uh, introduce this new special report on flow diversion. First of all, I would like to have your opinion. Uh, why do you think that flow diversion is the future of INR? Flow diversion is the present and will be the future. It's already the treatment for most of the cases that we have in our current practice. And definitely, we are getting towards expanding indications for more flow diversion in situations that we were doing other treatments in the past. So what are the recent developments that allowed you like, to offer flow diversion to more patients? Recently, the development of low-profile stents that can be deployed through small microcatheters opened the space of beyond the circle of wheels kind of location. So distal aneurysms or bifurcations uh, that can now technically be managed also with flow diversion. Is there still any situation when you, where you are not 100% confident to offer flow diversion to your patient? Our practice has to target a 2-3% to complication rate. Whenever we are not at that level, we should still be considering. We all treat complex bifurcation aneurysms with flow diversion, but I'm not so sure that we are st at the stage of treating every single bifurcation aneurysm with flow diversion yet. So what are you expecting from the future? New design, new coatings? What do you think is going to be the next big step uh, in, like, for example, improving the safety for the, the patients? All, the, all, the, all of the above. So all these points are important. New designs that will improve the redirection of flow, particularly if we are treating or thinking on treating on a bifurcation where there is a hemodynamic strategy. So we need to consider that it may be a different flow diversion compared to a sidewall. And also the coating will certainly improve. A lot of the improvements on the results of flow diversion over the years has been on the understanding of the anti-aggregation and on the prevention of the ischemic complications. The coatings, if they will tackle the, these acute issues that we still see, I think it will, will be of benefit to us and to the patients. You just mentioned anti-aggregation. How confident are you in your protocols? And do you think we need more data on that? Yes, I am not confident. We all have our own practices uh, on the use of flow diversion during uh, acute phase, on the use of flow diversion in fusiform lesions, in pediatric patients. There's still many questions regarding anti-aggregation, and we definitely need more data and around that. Do you think we need more studies, or do you think we can um, already get some data from registries, like real-life registries? Any data is important. Registries are important as well. But I believe we need prospective studies on testing the approach that we see that works best. Guidelines on anti-aggregation should be followed with a prospective study to confirm the impressions that we all think on the different methods that we use. Recently, we've seen new generation of many flow diverters that we used to use in the past for many years. Uh, what do you think this last generation as improvement in your practice? They have improved deployment. We've seen that more and more these devices are easier to deploy, they open better. Obviously, they all require their own education and training protocols, but once you are beyond that, that phase, the learning curves are shorter and the deployment techniques are better thanks to these developments. And so for the future, if you would have to choose, would you like to improve your complete occlusion rate or would you like to improve the safety of your treatment? For sure, you'd like both. I think if we think as a field, expanding flow diversion, we need to improve the safety. So there are still some uh, cases or issues with, regarding flow diversion that we don't understand. I have been fortunate to be using the new dedicated neuro OCT and I believe in the future, this will be an imaging that can help and improve the safety of flow diversion procedures. What do you think will be the first uh, knowledge that OCT will bring us regarding flow diversion? We can see everything. And we can see the device, we can see the wall, and we can see clots. We'll be able to do the measurements to better size the device. 
And after the deployment, OCT will tell us if there is a clot or not, if the device is well opposed or not, if there is any issue regarding the device or the stent construction itself. So I think these will all support the decisions afterwards on the management of these patients. So in your dreams in 10 years from now, what the ideal flow diverter will look like? I would love to see flow diverter that is easy to deploy in everybody's hands. A flow diverter that will have a coating that will prevent ischemic events or clotting issues and will facilitate the healing the occlusion rates, and a flow diversion that will be adaptable to the patients or to the needs, a flow diversion that will change the flow in a certain way in a bifurcation, exactly. in a sidewall, it will be more personalized and targeted to the different indications that we are unveiling now. I fully agree with you because maybe we don't need the same flow diverter in the siphon, then in, in the distal uh, bifurcation. Thank you, Vitor, so much for this perspective. Um, I hope that some of the creation you raise will be able to develop uh, in this special report. Uh, thank you, Vitor. I hope so too. Thank you very much. Thank you.